Hey everyone, and welcome back to this uh, tutorial series on the character controller. Today we're going to go ahead and start adding in some animations for our character and show you how you can do this in your own state machine that you've created. We're going to be using Mixmo assets in this uh, tutorial to kind of simplify that process. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing you want to do, open up your project and then we're going to go head over to Mixamo.com and all we're going to do here is make sure you select the model that you want to test with and then download a few animations. I've already downloaded an idle, a, a walking animation, and a, a jumping animation and a falling animation just to kind of show. So we're going to be using like this falling animation for example. Uh, it's just an idle. You'll want to get like idle animations like this and then just click download and uh, and you should be good. Come into your assets folder and I'm going to create a new folder called animations or just animation. And I'm going to open my downloads and drop these animations that I already downloaded from Mixamo. And uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to rename this breathing idle just to idle. And then I'll just rename this jumping up one to jumping. You don't have to do this, but I just like to simplify things a little bit. Go ahead and click, right click in your hierarchy and click create empty and rename this to player. So now we have two players and then you're going to grab your idle here and drag and drop that under player. Uh, and we're going to rename the idle under here to rig. And this is the actual rig that we're going to be working with um, for our animations. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that each of these are centered. So I'm just going to go ahead and do zero, 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 just kind of zero this guy out. And then I'm going to also do zero, zero, zero to make sure that they're just, everything's all centered and good to go. And uh, I'm just going to make this guy a little bit bigger just so he kind of matches our environment a little bit more. Uh, so now what we want to do, go ahead and click on your old player and we're going to copy some of these values over. Uh, so for example, our player state manager, go ahead and just select that and click copy component and then come to your player here and right click on transform and just go down to paste and component as new. And it's going to paste in that component from our old player and go ahead and just do that a couple more times. Okay. So as you can see, our character controller is kind of in a weird spot with the player. It's, it's not aligned correctly yet. Uh, so what we want to do is we just want to change the center of uh, this capsule to kind of align better with the player. So let's set this to one. And this looks like it's a little bit better aligned now. Uh, and then let's also add a component here for a collider because we need to make sure the player collides with the environment. Let's just do a capsule collider. And what we can do is just match the exact same character controller uh, variables we have here. So let's set Y to one and our height is going to be two. Now that we have everything copied over, go ahead and select your old player. And we're just going to go ahead and delete them. And now we have our new player with a rig. Let's go ahead and press the play button and just make sure that we can still move our new character around. Great, so it looks like we can still move him around. We can still, we can still perform our jump. The jump is a little shorter now. So we're gonna have to fix that, but, but overall that's looking pretty good. So go to your animation folder. We have all these animations here. And first thing we want to do is we're going to go through and rename these animations. Um, so if you click one of the arrows on one of these, you can see that it comes with a lot of things here, but it also comes with an animation connected to it. Go ahead and select the animation option up here and you can rename it to whatever you want. So I'm going to rename the animation to player walking for the walking animation. And uh, walking is a loop. So we do want to make sure that this loops. And also you might notice with my, my walking animation, the player moves from the center point. What you want to do in these cases is select loop pose, 
which locks the player into place. So they're just gonna loop in that one spot over and over again, which is what we want in this case. So click apply. And then let's just do that with our other animations real quick. Jumping, we don't want to loop though, uh, because you know we, we only want them to perform this when they initially jump or, or it might look kind of funny if it's like looping over and over, right? Um, so let's go ahead and leave that not looping. Uh, but we are going to rename this to player jump click apply and then our falling idle is also an idle animation that we want to loop because they could be falling for a long time they could be falling for a short time whatever that time is we want to make sure that loops rename this to player falling click apply okay so now all of our animations are ready to go and what we can do here is we actually want to attach our animator to the rig itself because it's going to be looking for these values to to animate so let's click add component and start typing animator and currently we don't have any animator controllers so we're going to click in our animation folder click create or open create uh, scroll down to animator controller and just call this player animator controller select our rig again and just drag this player animator controller to that controller slot then just double click on that and it'll open a new our new animator controller um, the first thing we want to do is uh, I set the uh, the player to idle right when we enter this animator so if you right click here and click create state and empty this will create a new empty state for us to use uh, and let's rename this to player. Uh, let's just rename this to idle. And now we can select our animations and we can see our newly uh, named animations in here. If you don't see it, you can search for them or you can even uh, drag and drop them from here into that into that slot. Uh, but in this case, we just we can just go and grab our player idle. And uh, now it should automatically start playing our idle animation when the game starts. So let's give that a try. And as we can see, our player is idling. To start using other animations, uh, we can start interacting with our state machine from our previous tutorials. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some new parameters. So make sure you select parameters here and click bool. And we're going to create two new parameters, one called is, is walking, and one called is idle. And these are just Boolean values. And we're going to create a new state here. So go right click, click create state and empty. And let's name this to walking and select our player walking animation. And uh, what we want to do is create some transitions between idle and walking. So if you right click on idle, you can click make transition. And all this is, uh, and this might look overwhelming. It, it really just takes a little bit of practice to get used to. And then it's, it gets pretty simple. Uh, what you want to do is all this is saying is, hey, we have an arrow pointing from idle to walking. Uh, what what state do we want it to be in to to get from idle to walking right and in this case if uh we have these conditions over here that we can set for idle to walking um and so we can just go ahead and click this plus button and it'll give us our new uh parameters that we've created is walking true if walking is true then we should probably be walking right and so that is a parameter, a condition for idle to transition to walking. And let's go ahead and add this as well. Is idle false? So if those bo both those conditions are met, uh, then we will start walking. And then let's go ahead and click right click on walking, click make transition. And we're just going to do the opposite for here. We're going to do, well, if it's not walking, but we are idle, if, it, if idle is true and walking is false, then we're gonna switch back to our idle state from walking. So now we have this walking state, which is great. Uh, but 
we need a way to set our idle and walking state. And this is where it starts to get really fun. Uh, so if you go into your player variable script, we're gonna add a new public animator. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, call this animator. I, we don't want it to get confused with the, uh, the default animator here that's in the Unity library. Um, and so we're just gonna call it underscore animator. Um, and now this can be accessed whenever we need it to be. First, let's go back to our project and we're gonna click on our player. And remember, we added an animator component to our rig. So if you click on player, uh, we ha now have this empty animator here. We're just gonna grab our rig that's attached to the player and drag that into our animator slot. So now it's looking for the rig that we've created and it will grab that animator component from it, um, which is exactly what we wanna see. And we're gonna go into our states next. So we did our player variables. We now can access our animator and first, let's handle what happened. How do we get into our idle state, right? Well, we already are entering into our idle state, but now we wanna just set the animator to set if it's idling or if it's, or if it's not idling, right? So all you have to do is uh, we, we're passing in our player. And so let's just do player.animator.setBool and this is just a function that you can call that's attached to the animator. And this expects two parameters. The first parameter um, is a string called name, and the second is a bool value. And all you have to do is pass in the name of the bool that you created and the value you want to set that bool to. So we're gonna just uh, call is idle because we're in the idle state. And we wanna set well, we just entered the idle state. So what do we want to set idle to? True. So this is automatically going to take that animator and set our is idle bool to true. And then we want to do the same thing with our exit state. When we exit, is idle true anymore? No, it's false because we are exiting that state. Uh, so now whenever we enter that state, Whenever we enter our idle state, it's gonna set idle to true. Whenever we exit idle state, it's gonna set idle to false. And we wanna do that with our walking state as well. So go ahead and just copy and paste that in there. And then we're gonna rename is idle to is walking. And we wanna set is walking to true when it enters that state. We wanna set is walking to false when we exit that state. So now uh, we should actually be able to see our new animations. Uh, but first, before we play this, um, we made one mistake. And that was allowing has exit time to stay checked. We don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen. We want it to automatically exit our idle state uh, and switch to our walking state whenever we need it to. And same with our, uh, same with going back from walking to idle, we just wanna exit uh, right, uh, right away. We don't want it to finish animating the entire walk cycle. We want to just switch right into our idle. So make sure you deselect has exit time for both of these transitions. That's very important. And now let's press the play button. And perfect. We can see that our player is switching into the correct states. We can do it this way, uh, but there's a little bit simpler way to do this uh, in a way that I prefer to do it because as we add more states in here, it's gonna get a little bit more annoying to have to go in and say, hey, is walking false, is idle true, blah, 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 blah. Is instead of doing this, come back to our player idle state, and instead of when we enter this state, uh, instead of setting a bool, we're gonna do play. And now play is another function that animator can call. And all we do for play is pass in the state name that we want it to play. So in this case, we're gonna do idle. And the state name is the name uh, the name that you gave this state right here. So I named it idle. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna just pass in that string name. So whatever you named it, you want to name you want to put that name in there as well. So now all we have to do is to switch to our walking state, and we're gonna delete this as well. And we're gonna just instead of do set bool, we're gonna do play. 
and we're gonna call walking and we can delete our true in there as well. Uh, and let's just make sure that that's the correct name. Yep, walking. So now it should give us the same effect, uh, but all we're doing is calling the play animation once. So let's see if that works. Perfect, and that works. Let's go ahead and we don't really need these anymore, so I'm just gonna delete them. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and add the rest of the states real quick. Um, so I can kind of speed up the video here, uh, but it's pretty simple. It's just going to be the exact same way that you did uh, all these other states. So go ahead and do that now. Let's give them a little bit bigger of a jump here before we, we press play. Uh, so I'm just going to up this by, I don't know, let's just give them a little bit bigger of a jump just so we can see our, our jump and fall state a little better. So let's press play here. And now when we press play, we can see he performs his jump animation. And then he performs his fall whenever he falls. And if we just walk off the edge without jumping, he should fall. Yep. So anyways, everyone, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribing with the notification bell on will help you stay up to date. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know in the comments. Anyways, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you next time.